to have you. Glad to have everybody here. Good to have Brother Yu here in service with us tonight. Hallelujah. Anybody excited when you see a guest come in the door? Even if it's just one. Even if it's just one. That's an awesome thing. Amen. If you have your Bibles, you turn to Deuteronomy chapter 6. I'm going to begin at verse 10. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 10. The scripture says, And it shall be. When the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, and to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things, which thou fillest not, and wells digged, which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. Just for a little while, I want to preach the subject title, There is Seed in the Ground. There is seed in the ground. You can be seated. The children of Israel lived in bondage for over 400 years, waiting on a promise to inherit, waiting to get to a land that was promised to their forefathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, and that was passed on to them. And they lived in a point of bondage where it did not appear at times where they would get out of it. They cried out to God, and finally one day the Lord said, all in his plan, he wasn't surprised by it or what have you, but in his plan, now is the time to leave Egypt. But from the moment that God spoke to Abraham, prior to that when he was Abram, when God spoke to him, that word that he spoke of his inheritance was all that was needed for the children of Israel to get to where they were going. God did not have to go and confirm and reconfirm anything. Once he spoke, that word was good enough. In Genesis chapter 1, when, when God spoke, that word was good enough to create whatever needed to be created and whatever he spoke. When he spoke to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob and said that your seed will inherit this land and will be as the sand by the seashore and as the stars in the sky, that word was good enough. He didn't need another word. didn't need somebody else to come behind and to give another word or to even give confirmation. That word was sufficient. That word was simply just a seed in the ground. And when they were in bondage, when it looked like there was nothing going on, what the children of Israel did not realize was that seed in the ground was going to come up. But today, because you're not where you thought you would be, doesn't mean that there is not seed in the ground. Because I'm not in the land of promise, that doesn't mean that there isn't something working under the surface. Because things in my life today aren't going the way that I thought they were, that doesn't mean that there is not seed in the ground. And furthermore, Scripture says that it shall be when the Lord thy God will have brought you into the land that he swore to your fathers. In verse 10, the land that he swore to them based on a seed that he planted when he spoke to them. To Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give you goodly cities which you didn't build. While you were in bondage, 
that land was being taken care of. While you were in bondage, houses were being built for you. While you were in bondage, vineyards were being planted. Cities were being built for you while you were in bondage. But God, I can't see what's going on because you're not supposed to be here yet. Just because God gave a promise, that doesn't mean tomorrow I need to reap the harvest of that promise. There is a process that goes along with that. Not only were they getting houses built for them, Brother Terry, but those houses were going to be full. You see, if you could just stay in long enough, God's already planted the seed. While you're in the process, somebody's building something for you. Not just building for you. <laughs> They're filling it for you. Uh, they're taking care of the vineyard for you. They're cutting the weeds out and keeping them out. Why? So that when you walk in, you can reap a harvest. Uh, when you walk in, you're not going to plant. Uh, but when you walk in, you're going to reap a harvest. I've seen houses every so often. I go onto one of those realtor websites, Brother Bond, and I look at these houses for sale. And these houses are staged, they look beautiful. And I wish, I, I wouldn't mind the desires of my flesh kick in, yes. I wouldn't mind a three, dollars $400,000 house fully furnished with everything that I want. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind something fully furnished. If you want to go out and buy new furniture and stage it, oh, God bless you. Some of this stuff looks good, and I want it. My bank account says otherwise. And the Lord says, stand still. I said, all right. They were getting houses they didn't build, reaping a harvest they didn't plant. Some of you here at Antioch North, I'm telling you, some of you here are going to come across souls where not a seed of word was sown into them by anybody from Antioch. But somewhere in their past, there was a seed sown. There was a word sown to them. There was something planted in them. And you might say, well, they weren't apostolic. They weren't this. They weren't that. The people that, that worked in these cities, they weren't, they, they weren't Jews. They weren't Hebrews. And God used them to build for his people. You're going to come across some people. The doctrine might not have been right, huh? but there's been a seed maybe planted in Sunday school. Maybe it was a prayer meeting. Maybe it was a grandmother. Maybe it was a father. Somebody planted a seed, and it all might not be right, huh? but God is going to bring them across your path. What are you going to do with it? You're going to look at it, well, God, I wouldn't have built it like that. God, I wouldn't have put it in like that. Uh, God's saying what I put in there is good enough. Uh, I just want you to water it. I just want you now to take care of it and cultivate. Can you take care of something that you didn't build but that God ordained to be built, that God ordained to be created, that God established. I believe that God is going to bring us across churches and communities of people where things have been sown into them, and God is saying, I want you to reap the harvest of what's been sown into their lives. Now, we know that the word of God is the seed. Sower went forth to sow. He sowed the seed. He sowed it on different types of ground, and different things happened. But I like what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 3. He said, I planted Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Thank God, God gave the increase. Thank God I don't have to give the increase. Verse 7, he says, so then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now, he that planteth and he that watereth are one. So I ask a question. If God's word, if the seed is being planted in hearts and if the seed is being ministered to souls, what's wrong with the seed? What's wrong with the seed? 
How come there isn't the fruit coming up that we're believing for? How come there isn't the harvest coming up that we're believing for? How come we're not reaping what we're believing for right this instant the way that we have thought of and the way that we've dreamed it? What's wrong with the seed? Well, first, can I tell you that there is no such thing as virtual farming? Some of y'all are looking at, what is virtual farming? I never heard of that. Neither have I. It doesn't exist. But what some try to do is to plant seeds in people without having to touch. Try to reach out and connect with people without reaching out and touching them. You can't reach out and plant anything unless you go out. The sower went forth to sow. The sower didn't sit back in the house with some contraption and just launch it out there and say, good luck, find some good ground. The sower went out to sow. I know we've got the virtual world and all that right now. But that is not a substitute for anything that God desires to do. I know we can do Bible studies and we can pray for people and even pray people through to the Holy Ghost on a phone call, a Zoom call, or whatever other kind of call. But don't limit God to that because there are still far more people walking around that we can reach out and touch than we will do over some mainstream media. So in order for the seed to have some type of effect, somebody's got to go out. Somebody's got to plant. Somebody's got to find some ground to plant in. Somebody's got to find a soul to sow into. I ask the question, how many of you have some seed? Now, this isn't the only seed, but how many of you have some of this? When you walk out of the house, you make sure you don't leave home without it. We make sure we don't leave out of the house with the credit card, but you make sure you got this card. And I don't mean balled up in your back pocket or shoved in a glove compartment, melting away, and then, oh, I do have one crumbled up. No. I'm talking about in good, pristine condition. I got to go out. I've got to sow because there's nothing wrong with the seed. There's nothing wrong with the seed. But when you read the Bible, we find out that there's a problem with the ground. But because there's a problem with the ground, that doesn't mean that that has to be the end of, the, of, of, of everything or anything. You see, I can help solve the problem with the ground. If you've got a hardened ground, Brother Barnes, I can help turn that ground over. I can help soften you up. Sister, if you've got any problems with him, you call me. We're going to turn over this hardened ground. Make him soft ground all over again. I can help somebody just by simply watering that ground. There are people, they don't even realize they've got cares in their lives that's trying to choke out the word of the seed that's been planted. They don't even know. They're blind to what's going on. They're blind to the works of the adversary. But I've got the power to come dig up that hardened ground. I've got the power to water. I've got the power to help them realize, hey, what you've got planted on the inside of you, it's not just a seed, but it's new life that's wanting to spring forth. Some people are walking around hopeless. And they have no idea how they're going to get from one point in life to the next point. Some think if I can just get to church and it's all about being in the church building, you don't understand. When I come out past you, I'm bringing Jesus Christ with me. And when Jesus comes and touches you, we can sing about the king of kings all day. But when the king gives me an order, I'm going to move. He's not going to be just somebody I sing about. I'm not just going to talk about there's hope in God. But let me demonstrate. Let me show you that there is hope. Why? Because I've got some seed that's working on the inside of me, and there's fruit that's coming out. But I don't want the seed to be dormant in me. I want that seed to be alive in me. I want that seed to be working. I want those roots to go down deep. John chapter 12, verse 24.
At times we look at others' lives, and you would look at them and say, God isn't, God's hand isn't on them. There's nothing going on. There's nothing at work in them. There's nothing moving them in them. They don't want what I've got. They don't want to hear what I've got to say. They don't want any of that. But judge nothing before the time. Don't judge that soul because you don't know what was planted in them 10 years ago. You don't know what was deposited in them. But have you ever walked past somebody and you just sent something? And maybe you said, the hand of God is on your life. They may have looked like there was nothing going on. They don't want anything to do with God. But you sense the hand of God is on your life. And they may not be able to even trace back to what happened. But maybe God touched them somewhere along the way. You see, but that just wasn't for me just to recognize, oh, the hand of God's on your life. Let me just let you know about it. No, that means that I can do something about it. That means that I may not know your name after today, but I see your face. And I can pray about you. And God knows what I'm thinking. And I can begin to pray. I can begin to water that ground. I don't have to know a thing about you. But I can go to God. I can stand in the gap. Uh, When I pray, I can send down waters from heaven to begin to soften that ground, to begin to water that seed. Just because they didn't come to church with you doesn't mean that something isn't working. Just because they didn't come to Bible study or sign up doesn't mean that something isn't working. You might have invited them ten times to small group and they didn't come, but that doesn't mean that something's not working. Hey, maybe on their bed at night the Lord's talking to them and something's turning and turning and moving. The Bible says in due season ye shall reap if you faint not. I think sometimes we faint because we don't see the fruit. But we don't realize what we're doing in prayer. We're watering a seed. Uh, we're watering a seed. Uh, we're pulling out some. Uh, we're pulling out weeds. Uh, we're setting up a hedge round about that. We're guarding that because a day's going to come uh, when, when, when Israel's going to leave Egypt. Uh, a day's going to come when that soul's going to get up and say, I'm going to church today. Today is the day of change. Uh, I'm getting baptized today. I'm receiving the Holy Ghost. I'm not leaving without a touch. But the only way that that can happen if somebody doesn't faint, if somebody can realize uh, there, that there is life in a seed that's been sown. John 12, 24, verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Two keys to that. That corn of wheat, that grain, that seed has to first fall into the ground. And you know what? I dare say that that's the easy part. We don't mind falling into the ground. We don't mind falling prostrate before the Lord. We don't mind being positioned in a certain place where God would put us. Sometimes that ground is our place of employment. Sometimes that ground is a place where we would be educated. Sometimes it's our community. Sometimes it's a grocery store. Sometimes it is a doctor's office. But I'll fall here in the ground. Lord, whatever you want to do in me, do it. Be like John. He said in in, in chapter uh, 3, John 3, He said, he must increase, but I must decrease. Notice what he didn't say. He didn't say he must increase, but I must die. He said, I must decrease. Maybe just kind of step off on the side just a little bit. He said, he must increase. Oh, I did it right. I thought I had it backwards. Praise God. He must increase, but I must decrease. We find out that John gets arrested and put in prison. Jesus is out teaching, doing miracles and all of that. He sends two of his disciples to Jesus to find out, are you the one that we are looking for? Are you him? Are you willing to decrease wherever God would place you, even in a prison? Lord, I didn't dream of being here. Get me out. Look, Jesus, if, 
If the blind eyes are being opened, the deaf people are hearing, the lame are walking, people are getting up, surely you've got the key to this prison. Surely you can work a miracle and get me out of here. But see, if John got out of prison, for whose glory would that have been? For whose good would that have been? Nobody but John. If the Lord gets you out of your situation, whose good is that working for? Is that for you or is that for, for the Lord? Except the corn of wheat fall into the ground, the corn of wheat fall and die. You see, we're good with falling. Can we die? Can we get planted in a certain place and die? Joseph. I tried to find something else, and the Lord wouldn't get me into it. I was like, Lord, can I have somebody else to talk about? I'm serious. Lord, I, I, I know Joseph, but is there somebody else we can talk about? No. Joseph. Joseph had a dream, but Joseph, in order to see the dream come to pass, you got to fall and die. Joseph was cast into the pit that had no water in it. They pulled him out. He gets sold gets taken down to Potiphar's house and sold. That was only the falling. The only way that you can die determines your attitude of submission in the process. Because when he was in Potiphar's house, it says that the Lord was with him. And Potiphar recognized it. You see, some of us will fall. I said us. I'm not pointing fingers. I said us. Some of us will fall, but we'll fall with a bad attitude. I don't want to be here. I'm just biding my time till my promise comes to pass. If, that, if that's the attitude, guess what? You're going to stay in Potiphar's house. You won't see the promise come to pass as you thought. You see, not only do they have a seed planted in them, but we are also a seed. And Joseph had to fall. He had to be cast down and die. You ever had one of those moments where you know you just surrendered everything to God? God hears everything. I'm an open book. I give you it all. You like, Okay, done deal. Wait for the revival and harvest. Three weeks later, man of God, ministers, preachers, something happens, go wrong. It's like, you haven't given me everything. But God, I just laid down at the altar and everything's in your hands. Yeah, that was part of the process. Let's go on to the next step. You see, Potiphar's house wasn't good enough. He then had to be cast out of Potiphar's house into the prison and fall there. But not just fall, he had to die in the prison so that whatever they told him to do in that prison, he did. And the Lord was with him. You ever get mad when the Lord's blessing you when you're in struggle? Things aren't going my way, but things are going his way, and you know it. Everything in you saying the will of God is being done, but everything in you is screaming, but my will isn't being done, and I don't like this. This isn't the way I would do it. This is not comfortable. But if you would stay in the process, Joseph fell and died, uh, and God said, all right, let's go again. Uh, let's fall and die, and he got into the prison, down in the prison with the king's prisoners, and died. But Joseph did like what we like to do. Try to find the escape door. I've got a gift. I can interpret dreams. He interpreted a couple of dreams and he said, now, when you're restored to Pharaoh, remember me, I was, I was wrongfully accused. I shouldn't even be here. But Joseph, what you don't realize, this is part of the process. You see, before the seed comes up, it's got to go down. Before the seed can blossom and come up, it's got to put down roots, good roots. If it comes up without putting down good roots, it's nothing more than a weed. Nothing more than a weed. You get a good flower, you put it in the ground, you got to work to pull that thing up. You get you a good weed, put it, in, put it in the ground, it don't take much to bring that thing up. And he got down there and died. I think he was down there for another year or two after he interpreted those dreams. I think the Lord said, well, we need to go through a purging. Get rid of this escape mentality. I need you to stay in the process. But he stayed in there, and then one day Pharaoh calls him out. 
He interprets the dream. He comes out and does all that. He gets placed as the number two man. Okay, here we go. Things are looking up better. Can I say this? Just throw this in here. Don't judge what you see on, in the natural always by God's goodness and faithfulness. Because I got a promotion, God's faithful. Because I got me some extra money, God's good. The promises of God are going to come to pass. Don't, don't judge God by that. But so he gets up there. He's the number two man. His, his brothers come back, and we, we, we know about what happens with them. He treated them roughly and mean and all that. But the day finally came when he revealed himself to them. Jacob gets word, your son's alive. They all come to where? Egypt. They came to the place where Joseph died. They came to the place where Joseph fell and where Joseph died. Why did Joseph die? His brothers, after Jacob died, brothers came to Joseph and said, now our father said, take care of us. Don't treat us mean because, you know, forgive us for what we did. Joseph finally got the revelation of why he had to fall and die. You see, up to that point, you may not understand why. Chances are you probably won't understand why. But finally, Joseph understood why. He said what you intended for evil, God meant for good. To save many souls alive. You see, what you're going through might feel like evil, might seem like evil. It may not seem like God is at work in any of that. But if you would not just fall but die, give yourself to the process. Submit yourself to the process and what God is doing, whether that is in your home, whether that is on your job, at work, in your community, whatever it is, whatever is going on in sickness and in health, if you would die in that process. Who knows how many souls God's going to save alive because you died. Because you gave yourself into the process. What would have happened if Joseph got out of that process? Where would Israel be? What would happen if Joseph escaped that? What would happen if Joseph said, I'm out of here. I'm finding me a back door and I'm gone. What would have happened to Israel? Where would Jacob be? Where would Reuben be? Where would Gad be? Where would all the tribes be if Joseph had left before? But because he stayed in the process, there was fruit birth. What would happen if you get out the process too soon? With what you're going through and what you're facing, what happens if you leave just a moment too soon? Who's going to miss out on new life? Who's going to miss out on new birth? Who's going to miss out on hope? Who's going to miss out on restoration? But God, I don't like what I'm feeling. God, I don't want to die. I don't want to die either. But it's not about how I feel when I die. Because when I die, it's about what God can do through my death. And I'm not talking about a physical death here tonight. Some of y'all look like y'all done clammed up on me now. I'm not trying to die right now. I'm, not. I'm talking about my will. I'm talking about my desires. I'm talking about my plans. I'm talking about my purpose. You see, just as Jesus was the seed that died so that I could have new life, now I can turn around and be a seed so that when I die and I give up my will and, and, and everything that I want in this life, somebody else can experience new life because of me. Stephen died so that Saul could have new life. And really, everybody that stood in that council and everyone that stoned him had a chance to have new life. And even if it's just one. Well, I don't have a harvest coming from my life. It doesn't matter how many. Let God worry about the harvest. One's going to plant. One's going to water. Let God be the one that worries about the increase. But are you willing to die? Are you willing to give up control? Are you willing to give up your life? You see, a dead person doesn't have a care. A dead person doesn't have a worry. 
A dead person doesn't fear. A dead person doesn't have plans. Oh, I know. Mm. A dead person doesn't resist. If you're resisting God, then that means that you've got your will alive. And the Lord is trying to help you to kill it. You see, here's the thing, though. Look at Joseph. How did Joseph get to where he was going? He didn't get there all by himself. He didn't die all by himself. He had ten brothers help him, or nine. Nine brothers, the closest ones to him. They helped him die. Or not. Yeah, they helped him die. They first helped him in the pit, though. When he got into Potiphar's house, who was it? Potiphar's wife. She helped him get kicked out. What did I do wrong? Nothing. You're just part of the process. You know what? Some of us get caught up asking that question. God, what did I do wrong? Or what did I do to deserve this? That's the wrong question. Wrong question. It's not about what you did or didn't do. Now, that's unless you're going out there and just making a mess of everything. Then, yeah, repent and get it right. But if you're walking with God and things aren't going your way, find out if they're going God's way. Find out if they're going God's way. But God, uh, God, I didn't envision this. God, I saw stars and I saw sheaves bound down to me. God, I saw my coworkers being saved and I saw a great harvest. I saw my neighbors being touched. I saw people being healed. I saw the building being full. God, I can't even go to church because of this and that. God, I can't even reach out to people because of this and that. You don't understand. Uh, you, you may not be able to get out and do what you want to do, but find out what God wants you to do. He might have you in this place where you can't move and can't do the things that you want to do to bring things to pass. You see, often it's our strength that gets in God's way. So he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He brings me to a place to sometimes rest and die where I give up control. All right, God, not what I want, but what you want. Lord, how do you want to do it? A dead person doesn't need a plan. They don't need to plan for tomorrow. They don't need to plan for the, for the future. They don't need to worry about any of that. A dead person doesn't need to bow down to uncertainty because their life is already hid in Christ. They've already laid everything down for Christ. So where are you going to be tonight? Are you going to be alive and well, or are you going to allow yourself to be placed in a grave? Jesus didn't kill himself, but it was those that were close to him that, that, that put him on the cross and killed him. And we fuss and fight with God because it's the ones that are the closest to us that are helping us to give up our will. It's the ones that are closest to us that are helping us to die. But when you die, you're going to bring forth much fruit. When you die, I'm not even saying if you die, because I believe somebody in here is going to find a place to die. Now, Paul said this. He said, I die every Christmas. Paul said, I die every time Easter comes around, I die. No. Paul said, I die daily. Daily. Jesus said, you can't be my disciple. If you are, you're going to have to take up your cross. And in one of the gospels, he said, take up your cross daily and follow me. But I, I don't want to go down like that, God. You don't understand. If you don't go down, you're not going up. If you don't go down, you're not going up. Uh, I want to see the promises of God come to pass. Uh, I do too, but God says I need somebody that's willing to die. I want to see Baltimore saved. Uh, I need somebody that'll die. I want to see Baltimore County reached. Uh, I need somebody that'll die. I want to see East 25th Street reached. Uh, I need somebody that'll die. I want to see my place of employment reached. Uh, I need somebody that'll die. You see, death 
for us signifies the end of something. Death signals a finality. Death signifies loss. Things will now cease. Things will no longer be, come to a com conclusion, a completion, an end. That's in our term, our definition. And the adversary would love for all of us to walk out of here thinking that if I die, then that's it. I won't have a life anymore. I won't have a future. A future. I won't have a purpose. God has nothing more for me. But I tell you, that is a lie. Because when you die, that is not the end. And this is the one time that you will find in the Bible that if I die, that is just the start. If I die, if I allow myself to be planted, if I allow God to position me to fall and to be planted, that isn't the end. That doesn't mean things are over, but that is just the start. You see, when Jesus died on the cross, he said it is finished. Humanity said it is finished. But in the spirit, it said this is just the start. Because now I can now pour out my spirit upon all men. I can save souls that, that, that were deemed lost forever. I can reach down and save those that were condemned to eternal death. I can transform and change lives. This is just the start. You see, brother and sister Bond, when you die, there's going to be harvest and revival in Hamilton. Small group leaders, when you die, your, your small group is going to grow. Your small group is going to double. Antioch North, uh, when we die, we're not just going to fill up this building, uh, but we're going to have more small groups. Uh, we're going to have more daughter works. Uh, we might have preaching points. Uh, we're going to have more Bible studies. We're going to have more drive through prayers. Uh, we're going to reach out more, whether as a group or individually, when we die. You see, in order for life to come, that means that something has to die. But although it falls and dies, that's not the end. That's just the start. That's just the beginning. Anybody ever remember that day that you were baptized in Jesus' name? You remember that day where you were filled with the Holy Ghost, began speaking in other tongues? Or even furthermore, let's go a step further. Do you remember the day where you first prayed for somebody to receive the Holy Ghost and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began speaking in other tongues? Or, 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 or possibly being there that day when a loved one, a friend, a relative, or whoever went down in the waters of baptism and had all of their sins washed away and they came up speaking in other tongues? Do you remember that? All of that happened because somebody died. Somebody died. Bringing forth life, we would imagine it as just putting a seed in the ground, water it. Give it some miracle grow, give it a good boost of something, hurry up and get them in a two-day Bible study, and we're going to send them back out. You see, for all of this to work, it takes work. It takes some laborers. It takes some laborers. Is there anybody here that's willing to work? Is there anybody here that's willing to work? And say, you know what, it's not about me. It's not about what I want, how I want, when I want it, where I want it. It's not about that. Lord, wherever you want me to be, that's where I'm going to go. Lord, whatever you want to do in me, that's what I want to do. I don't want to be like John the Baptist and get put in a position where I'm saying, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He must increase, I must decrease, and then questioning God. I don't want to live there, but I want to live in a place where, Lord, wherever you want me to be, and, Lord, if this is the place where I need to fall in the ground, if I need to be cast in the ground and die, Lord, I want fruit to be birthed and produced from through my life. I want fruit. You see, you can look around at other people and say, it looks like they've got fruit and they've got fruit and I don't have anything and I'm, I'm trying to do all the right things here. There are no two seeds that are the same. They might have the same name, but they're not going to produce the same way. 
You might produce the same fruit and the same flower, but at times that fruit is going to come up at different times. But God, I don't see anything working. I don't see anything moving. You can't see below the surface. You don't see what's working down there. You know, I think sometimes if we saw what was really going on down in the dirt, that would scare half of us. That seed breaking open and all those other things crawling around it. Imagine yourself being planted in dirt. And we're not talking about some white sandy beach somewhere. We're talking about in dirt with all the worms, grasshoppers, cicadas every 17 years. Planted down there with them. And we say, God, this isn't comfortable. And he said, I did not make the ground comfortable for you. I didn't make it. I made it so that you can be broken in it. I made it so that you can be broken open in it and so that you can plant some roots down into the soil, so that you can plant some roots down into the ground so that when you do come up, you can produce fruit. There are people out there that have got seeds in them already. But what, what, what role are you going to play in their life? When you walk past them, can you discern the seed that's been planted? Or do they just look like another weed that nobody wants any part of? Do you say, no, they're hopeless. That seed is dead. They're just wayside ground. They're just wayside ground. They're just stony ground. They're just hardened ground. They're just cares. They just got cares all wrapped around them. Or can you say, you know what, there's seed in there, and I'm going to help you bring that seed to birth because I'm going to fall into that ground and die. I'm going to be one that will help to stand in the gap. Brother Taylor, man, I wanted to come out in that area yesterday, and I know they did the drive through prayer out near your area, but you know what, you getting connected here, I know you know, but I just, there is no coincidence in that. No accident in that. And there were seeds that were planted to bring you to this point. Brothers and sisters, tell it there, there were seeds that got planted even before you were saved to bring you to this point. And I know that you've seen some fruit. My God, I know you've seen some fruit in your time. I know that God has done some things, but you have yet to see all that God is going to do. You have yet to reap the harvest that God is going to do through you. You see, Joseph, Joseph went to Egypt for his family to be saved. But what Joseph did in Egypt did not just impact his family, nor Egypt. It impacted the world. You see, when you fall into the ground and die, you don't have to focus on reaching everybody. Just reach those right there in your circle and let God work through you in reaching everybody. My God. Brother and Sister Taylor, if you would stay in the process, uh, just stay in what God's doing. Uh, allow God to strengthen. Uh, allow God to build up. Uh, allow God to solidify. Allow him to prune. Uh, allow him to cut back. Uh, I tell you, in time, to, in time to come, you will reap the harvest that God has intended for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, if you would receive that, why don't you raise your hands? In the name of Jesus, don't stop sowing, don't stop watering, don't stop sowing, don't stop watering. There may not be, it may not look like much is happening, but there's a lot going on under the surface that you don't even realize. Brother and Sister Terry, Brother and Sister Terry, in due season, you will reap. You will reap. And I know this, uh, this war ministry, it takes dedication. It takes commitment. 
But if you will give yourselves to it and be willing to die for whatever God wants to do with it, you will reap a harvest through this ministry. And I'll tell you this, it won't come through a manner that you think it'll come. How? I don't know. But it will not come in a manner. And, and here's the thing. I know it's wellness and recovery. I know you don't necessarily treat it like that and just put out a certain lesson of dealing with certain things. You allow the Holy Ghost to work through you and to, to minister. But this is just going to be a platform for reaching people and connecting to people. And if you would open up your spirit to God, God is going to lead you to doing things unconventional, thing in ways that you never even would have imagined. You can go and look at other plans from other churches and other programs, and what God will give you will look nothing like theirs. But what God is going to give you is going to be a surefire plan that works because he's the author of it. I believe that God wants to give us a harvest in our small groups. If you are a small group leader, why don't you stand? if each and every one of you small group leaders would get outside the box and what I mean with that is I know we make plans, plan ahead and, and, and do those things. I'm not talking about not making plans and just flowing along with whatever. But if you would seek God and take the cap and allow God to remove the cap with how you plan and how you lead, first and foremost, if you would fall into the ground and die, Die for that community you live in. Die for that area that you're reaching. The Lord will bring about a harvest. And I believe the Lord will bring about growth to Antioch North through our small groups. The growth does not have to come by an invitation to this building. I believe that growth will also, and it needs to, for this church to be healthy, needs to come through our small groups. Each of you leaders, why don't you lift your hands to the Lord right now? In the name of Jesus. Come on, determine right now. I'm going to die. I'm dying out to my will. I'm dying out to my way. In the name of Jesus. Lord, however you want to do it through me, do it. Lord, however you want to do it through this group, do it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, help us to have an outward focus. Help us to have an outward focus. Lord, help us not to be turned inward. Help us not to be turned on ourselves, but to be turned outward. To change our vision, to look outward. In the name of Jesus. If you're teaching a Bible study and you're teaching somebody that is not, that does not have the Holy Ghost, why don't you stand? If you're teaching a Bible study and they do not have the Holy Ghost, why don't you stand? Are you willing to die out for that student? Are you willing to die out? Come on. Are you willing to die out for that, for that soul? Are you willing to die out? 
Not just a Bible study, but Lord, this is an opportunity for an experience. Lord, I'll die for them. Lord, I'll stand in the gap. Lord, whatever it is that I need to do, whatever my part is, Lord. If you desire to participate in evangelism and you're willing to die out to yourself, to your will, why don't you stand? If you're willing to participate in evangelism, I didn't say drive through prayer. I didn't say door knocking. I said evangelism. In other words, if you're willing for God to, to allow God to use you whenever, wherever, and however, and you're willing to die out to yourself, uh, why don't you make that known to the Lord right now? Here I am, Lord. Lord, here I am. Lord, I'll be the seed that falls into the ground. Lord, I'll be the seed that falls into the ground. Lord, I don't want to I don't want to live alone. I don't want to be a seed sitting on a shelf somewhere looking good and looking pretty and just whole as I am. Lord, I don't want to be a seed just sitting on a shelf. Lord, however you need to put me in the ground, put me in the ground. Lord, wherever you need to plant me, plant me. Wherever, Lord, I need to be, plant me. But, Lord, don't let me just fall in the ground. God, help me to give up so that I would die. Lord, help me to give up so that I would die. In the name of Jesus, Lord, help me to die out to self. Lord, so that souls would be reached, so that many souls would be saved alive. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now I'm going to say this. Some of us, we're willing to do that. or there's The Spirit is willing, but there's a hindrance in our flesh that keeps us from moving. And, and we end up siding with flesh. Some of us need to lay some things aside. So if there are some things that you know of that you need to lay down before the Lord uh, to part with, I'm going to ask you to get out from where you're seated or from where you're standing and come down to this altar and lay some things down. Uh, lay some things aside. You've got some things that are keeping you from dying out. You've got some things. Uh, you'll fall, but there are some things that are keeping you from dying out. Where you wake up and say, I can't die today. Lord, I'll fall. I'll lay prostrate. But I've got to have something left of mind. Come on, bring that thing down here to the altar. Lay it before the Lord. Come on, some of us have to submit to the Lord. Some of us aren't submitted to God. Some of us haven't submitted our will to die out. We want to see a harvest, but we're not willing to give up our will for the harvest. We want to see souls changed. We want to see lives changed. Sometimes we're not willing to do what's necessary, and that's us giving up our way, our will, our plan. But if you would lay it down before the Lord, if you would lay it down, there's a harvest. The Lord has called us to reap. He's called us to reap if we won't faint. Lord, I don't want to just decrease. Lord, I've got to die. Lord, I lay my life down. I lay everything down, Lord. For whatever it is that you desire to do. For whomever you desire to reach, Lord. I may know them, I may be acquainted, or I may not know. God, whatever it is that you desire to do, I lay it down, I lay it aside. I 
Lord, I submit to your will. I submit to your purpose. I submit to the process, Lord. I submit to your calling and what you desire to do. Lord, I want to be like Joseph. I want you to be with me. Not on my terms, God. I want you to be with me on your terms. Oh, they're seed in the ground. They're seed in the ground. They're seed in the ground. Don't be weary and well doing. The death is worth it. The death is worth it. The giving up of self will is worth it. It's worth it. It's worth to see the harvest. It's worth it to see the crop. It's worth it to reap. Lord. 